Hi everyone, welcome to Cobalt Academia's Hacking Hub to video series. I'm Bishra, aka RE1R0, an offensive security researcher and apprentice architect at Cobalt.io. With Hacking Hub to video series, we explore vulnerabilities that we encounter every day during pen tests. We will see how to exploit OS based VSV tree session management attacks by using different scenarios. If you're ready, let's jump in. In this video, we will see how to exploit hash length extension attack on a hacked box machine called Intense. So this was a hard box and it is including a vulnerability related to session management because the session cookie is weak and you can basically decode it to, to parse your own cookie to take over admin account. So I already done some basic enumeration and if you're ready, let's jump in. So when you go to this HTTP page, you are realizing there's a message saying you can log in with username and password guest. There is also a link here that says that this app is open source. When I click it, I just downloaded the source code for the application. So when I go over the file, uh, I've realized this file, which is including some cool details. For instance, how the cookie value has been created. It's, it's including session value by base64 encoding it. Then there's a dot character to concatenate cookie signature by encoding it with base64 again. So when I see this, I wanted to see what kind of cookie value I will have. So basically I logged in with the credentials that's been given, guest, guest. I just logged in, I'm going to burp. As you can see, we have this value here. So since I know how this been created, this is the base 64 encoded value of the session. And then there is a dot, as you can see here, and this is the base 64 encoded value of cookie signature. So when I send this to decoder and decode it with base 64, as you can see, we have this username guest and then the secret value. Pretty cool. If I know the secret value for admin, I can basically parse this uh, and, and try to create the signature so that I can have the full cookie. So there's an SQL injection attack here, which I'm sure that you will love. But since this is not a walkthrough for this box, I am skipping this part. Imagine that I already got the value. When you, exploit SQL, when you exploit SQL injection vulnerability, you will get a hash. It's not uh, possible to crack the hash. So basically the hash belongs to the secret. So you will get the username as admin, secret uh, coming from SQL injection. So there is only one part to finish this exercise, which is the cookie signature. So if you go back to see how the signature has been created, you will see that it's been signed with SHA-256. If you check online, you can even check Wikipedia, super easy to see. Uh, this hash function is vulnerable to hash linked extension attack. And there is a super cool tool called hash extender to create a new signature value. So I grabbed this really cool bash script, which is super easy to write yourself to uh, use hash extender tool to create the signature. When I run this, it gave me this authentication session cookie. So let's see what it is doing. So what it's doing is that we will have this value username admin and then the secret that we get from the SQL injection. We will be base64 encoding this whole value and then we will be concatenating it with a dot character. And since the signature can be between 8 to 15 uh, character length, uh, we will be creating this. We need to see uh, which length applies here. We need to play around a bit to see which one is working. I think it was 14, which uh, applies in this exercise. So basically, you will be using um, this tool hash extender to get a signature. So yeah, when I run this, I got the following cookie value when I copy this. I spent so many hours to solve this exercise. It's incredible how less time I'm spending to show you guys how to solve this. I'm sure that you will also spend some time to 
solve this uh, exercise. Uh, but I learned so many stuff. It was really cool. Um, when I send this, you will realize that there is another endpoint appearing here. Admin. Apparently, we just get the admin account takeover here. I am seeing the response in the browser. And as you can see, it says welcome admin and there is the admin option. I think from there you need to see some LFI vulnerability. Uh, but that's not the point of this exercise of this video. So what we've done here, let's review again. How is this related to session management video? So when we go to port 80, um, it was allowing us to log in with guest guest credentials. We, re we realize that there is this open source link which allows us to download the app source. I downloaded it, I go over the files and I realize this file LWTPY. When I see the file content, I realize how cookie has been created, the 64 encoded value of session concatenated by a dat character and then B64 encoded value of cookie signature. Then I got um, then I decoded the current value with guess guess credentials uh, in decoder it should be here. Yeah, and it was giving me username guest and then secret value. So I found another vulnerability SQL injection on the app. And from there, I got a secret value, which was the hash. I couldn't correct the hash. Then I was thinking, why not using it in here? Because um, I am trying to create a cookie value for admin anyway. So from there, I continued reading the source code and I realized how um, signature has been created with SHA-256 hash algorithm, which is vulnerable to hash length extension attack. I realized that the range is between 8 to 15 characters. So I downloaded this tool, hash extender, which is a super cool tool and use this really small uh, and easy uh, bash script. To first create the first part, which is super easy, you're basically write, writing username admin and secret, which comes from SQL injection attack, and you are basing basics for encoding it, and then you are creating the signature in the same way that's been explained in here, and and you are concatenating it with a dot character, as you can see here, and when you replace your cookie value on burp, you are basically get in the admin page. You just had an account takeover. Super cool attack, but um, you need to get the source code to understand what's going on here. It's not easy to handle this blind because how would you know that there's uh, SHA-256 hash algorithm has been used and stuff. So if you have the source code, if you're that lucky to have all these little um, tips here. So basically that's the way to solve this vulnerability. In this video, we will see how to exploit broken session management vulnerabilities on a hack the box machine called Red Cross. So I already done some basic enumeration and I found these subdomains intra.redcross and also admin.redcross at hack the box. Of course, I added this to etc hosts file. Let me show you really quickly. Uh, and the following format. So let's go back to browser and um, so after doing some basic enumeration for the known username password combinations, I realized that for guest guest, uh, we are getting a different response than the others. Since this is not a walkthrough for this box, I'm not going to go into details, but you can just do the basic enumeration for username password login area. When I send this guest guest, it's checking provided credentials and it's given us the following response. You're granted for the low privilege access. So let's see what's going on with burp, what kind of request has been sent. And here, as you can see, we have the following cookie value with a PHP session ID, a length parameter uh, since for some time specifications, and a domain called intra, as a logged in for intra.redcross that hacked the box. So what I'm going to do is, since I have credentials, I will try it for admin. I'm trying it with guest guest. It says not enough privileges, so it's not working. The trick that I'm going to do is, since there's a broken session management vulnerability, I will just be using it to log in to the admin panel. 
So I'm going back to Burp. As you can see, we have this uh, PHP session ID when I am trying to log in with guest guest user name, password credentials. I'm sending this to repeater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the cookie value that's been used for another subdomain. I'm copying this value for the valid credentials, pasting this here. Since we are dealing with a different domain here, which is admin instead of intra, I will be also replacing this with admin. I will be sending this. It gives us a redirect. That's nice. We continue. We reach out to the IT admin panel. Let's see the response in browser. As you can see, we already reached out to the admin panel. So this is a sesh, broken session management vulnerability that allows you to use the same cookie value from a different subdomain um, by just changing this parameter value as admin. In this video, we will see another scenario in secure session management. We will be using the exercise two from um, the CTF. I can share the URL with you after this video. So let's see what kind of web website that we have. I clicked on this exercise two. It gave me a login panel. I wrote admin, 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 admin. It gives me this message by saying incorrect password. I'm checking for the res uh, I'm checking for the page source, and as you can see, there's a comment saying implement secure sessions. So let me be fair here. It's such an easy exercise. It's like super uber easy. I just wanted to include this scenario because you can see the more complex scenarios in real life, which are similar to this one, but more complex, definitely. So what I'm going to do is let me show you a different way instead of burp. I am inspecting the element. Let's go to network tab and let's write some credentials. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's see what kind of request has been sent. It's been sent with a post request. And as you can see, there is a cookie value uh, with this parameter PHP says ID. So this value looks like it's base64 encoded. It looks similar to the value that I saw before. So I'm copying this. Uh, there's a URL encoded value also. I am sending this to burp. I'm sending this to burp decoder. Let's say smart decode first. As you can see, there is this equal sign at the end of it, which is URL encoded. And uh, let me remove this value. And when I say uh, decode this as base64, I'm getting this value authenticated false. Super easy, I know, but always be aware that um, the cookie value that you're writing here can be insecure and not validated on the server side just on the client side so what you need to do is you just need to change the values of whatever encoded value that you see here you decode it change this to something that you want to see authenticated true or if there's a username here username is given in this cookie value by encoded in an encoded way such as i don't know user equal carlos let's say just change this to admin and see if server side is validating or not so what we're doing is encoding this with base64 again, and I will be adding uh, a call sign at the end of it. So what I'm doing is that I'm going to cookie manager, search cookies for this website. Uh, I am changing this to the following value, saving the current cookie and, um, and just refreshing the page. And as you can see, we just got the flag. So pretty basic exercise, I know, but um, always keep in mind that you need to check the session cookie and if there is any encoding applied on the session cookie to see some more um, reasonable client side uh, definitions on the user, always poke around, always play around a bit to see if you can change anything if the session is not validated on the server side when you change something on the client side. Pretty basic exercise, but keep it in mind, guys. Thank you for watching my videos. Stay tuned for more content. Cheers!